burns continue to carry a very high mortality depending on the extent of burns, particularly anything above 60 percent still carries a high mortality. And predominantly it is because of the severe infections and later on by the hospital acquired infections. So, I would like to ask you that uh, how quickly the infection uh, occurs in a burn patient and is it related to the extent or the degree of burns? Yeah, typically you start seeing infections after 4 to 5 days of hospital admission. Because early on a burn is more or less sterile because of the heat that the burn engenders. And uh, uh, the greater the surface area of the burn, the greater the risk of infection. The cutoff point seems to be about 15 to 20 percent, beyond which the rate of infection goes up with each percentage increase in BSA. And uh, just by looking at it, is it possible to distinguish the colonization from infection? Uh, you, you can say that if you have features of infection like for instance uh, blue green discharge, a malodorous smell or signs of erythema there is infection, but a clean wound burn is you cannot always say there is no infection. If you suspect you have to do a burn biopsy, a burn wound biopsy. You know I mean I have heard you saying about burn wound biopsy, but I hardly see anybody practicing burn wound biopsy. I mean is it really practiced? It is, but I agree that many surgeons tend to tend to avoid doing this practice mainly because the ABA has given a clinical criteria improvement in a burn wound appearance after starting antibiotics as an acceptable criterion. So, people tend to do that. The downside is you may often end up using a lot of empirical unnecessary antibiotics which may impact your antibiotic resistance profile and future infections. So, what do you feel is the most important factor which can change the outcome in these patients? Good infection control. It is important to have a specialized burn unit set up for that practice because these are high risk patients without any BSA. Whatever is there in your ICU will get into their system unless there is scrupulous infection control. Clean air, one on one nursing, cohort nursing and very clear standards when you do lines and procedures. So, infection control is the number one thing for a burn wound ICU. And I think that is what is responsible for the mortality in the patients. That's true, correct. And just talking about a little bit about the trauma patients, how to prevent infections in a trauma patient? Again, the same principle would apply. And I, I am asking you about the neurosurgical, I mean, neurotrauma patients. Neurotrauma patients, there are a couple of issues. The first one is whenever they have any devices, for instance, an intracranial pressure monitor or a ventriculostomy device, it has to be put in. At